Good morning everybody and welcome back to another video. For today's video we're going to actually share to me of um, in my opinion of why corn snakes I think make are, are going to be super are super popular pet reptiles to have. So feel free to stick around for that everybody. Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So one of the few reasons why I think corn snakes are such great pet snakes to get is because of their temperament. They're very docile. They actually uh, aren't so bitey compared to some other snake species like um, like Texas rat snakes. Corn snakes are a type of rat snake but they are actually more docile temperament than their other cousins out there. You know and corn snakes are super placid you know they're not so not so defensive compared to some other colubrid snakes are and it's just a really very great pet snake to get you know and they're but considered one of the best starter pet snakes in the pet trade for the last like 50 years and it's just an awesome species to get everybody just super cool I mean for take for example my guy Sprosty here from the moment that I purchased him from the Tinley Park show last year he's just been this kind of temperament you know he's been very calm you know he's not so defensive that's just what I like about him you know it's just not only is it because of his colors, but it's just his temperament. It's very, very calm. He's very sociable as well, and uh, he's got a good appetite too. If you do get some time to do socialize with your animal, kind of like how I do right here, it's a good idea to make sure the animal knows that you are not like an intruder to them. You know, they cut, they'll figure it out eventually after you offer them a little bit of food, but anywho, on to the next one. Another good reason why corn snakes are very popular pet snakes, everybody, and a reason you should get one is because of their size. Corn snakes actually don't get quite as big as compared to some of their other cousins like beauty snakes and like um, Kribos, which can get like 7-8 feet long on average. But whereas corn snakes, they usually get no bigger than like 3-4 to four feet long. Like my guy Frosty here, he is a male corn snake, and males tend to stay much smaller. They usually get no bigger than like 2 feet. Whereas a female will probably get about four, maybe four and a half foot long at most. So they get, they don't get quite as large compared to like other big snakes, you know. Like if you don't want like a boa or anything like that, or even a ball python for that matter, a corn snake is a great option there. You know, they, like I said, they tend to stay smaller and more slender, and they don't actually cause quite as much of a mess. So yeah, if you're looking for a decent snake that's, that's a, about mid-range size, but it's not too small, but not too big, Corn snakes is probably the right choice for you. Another valid reason why that corn snakes, to me, are great popular pet snakes, everybody, is because they're inexpensive. And now what I mean by that is, is like, inexpensive means it's like, it's not that expensive, meaning it's at affordable a price. Um, the average price for a normal baby corn snake will probably go for about $30 a piece on average. But there is a catch though. You guys probably do know though, in the reptile world, that there are many different morphs of corn snakes that have been produced over the decades, everybody. And it typically depends, like, the bloodline on them. If it has, like, for example, here, we got Ariel, and her morph, she's a ghost corn snake, which is between a, a the breed from an aneurtheristic and, I believe, an amelanistic? Ah, shoot, I can't remember what the genes are of it now. I'll have to... I'll have to take a look at it here in a moment. When you actually combine those two different genes to make the ghost corn, the price is going to go up. So, but when I got her from the reptile show several years ago, and this was like 2017 when I got her, her the price on her was about $45. But to, in today's deal, it's probably close to about at least 100 bucks. We're talking about, yeah, that sounds about right, $100 a piece now, which is a little bit, a little bit pricey for a young corn snake, but. Hey, times have changed, everyone. Now, like I said, if you guys are looking for a specific morph of a corn snake, you gotta be, you know, specific about it. But if you just want a normal type corn snake, especially if it's a baby one, it's gonna be super affordable because, like I said, average price is probably gonna go $25, $30 a piece. Yeah, like I said, it depends, like, like I said, depends on, like, the bloodline and what, what genetics are in it. If you just wanna get a normal type corn snake, Probably then, that's gonna be the cheapest one you're gonna find. And the final touch, everybody, that I want to conclude on this um, on this video is one thing that you definitely need to know is that corn snakes they are known to are a type of rat snake, so obviously they are are gonna eat rodents, but they don't just eat random specific ones in captivity. Well, maybe in the wild they do, but in captivity specifically, they are fred frozen thawed mice because it's a really got a lot of nutrition in it and not a lot of fat. Whereas if you were feeding them like frozen rats, you know, like small rat pups, 
that's going to contain a lot of fat and if you feed them through that over the years chances are your animal could get obese and obesity is really really bad for your pet reptile especially snakes as well and when it comes to affording food for your pet corn snake it's really not that expensive for example like when i went to like my local pet store over the years to go buy some mice for my corn snakes or all my snakes in general a pack of them that contained like six frozen mice was about 12 bucks a piece which i guess it's not too bad but when i went to like a reptile show or if i act better yet i went shopping online for example you guys like i I've done a lot of online orders, whether it's Rodent Pro or Cold Blooded Cafe. I prefer Cold Blooded Cafe, to be honest with you. When I ordered from them, a single mouse there was probably worth like 25 cents a piece. Now, if I was gonna get like like 50 like medium mice in a package, that's probably gonna be around between 50 and 70 dollars, including that includes shipping, by the way, which is not actually that bad, you know, because. When you got so many rodents in a bag like that, 50 to 100 rodents, and it's gonna be a lot more expensive, but that actually can save you a little bit of money, you guys. You don't have to, like, spend every couple weeks going to your pet store and buying, like, a small half a dozen small boxes of rodents for, like, 12 bucks a piece. Now, if I went to a reptile show for some frozen rodents, chances are I think they are gonna be really, really, really affordable there. Obviously, you're not ordering online, you know, and they're not gonna ship it to you. Instead, you'd be buying it in person, and that probably saves you quite a bit of money, too. Like, for example, everybody, my girl Ariel here, she only eats, a, a, I guess, one meal every 14 days, and I ordered, let's say, a ship a package full of large mice for her but contained 50 in the, in the bag much mice like doing right there so 50 mice in a bag and she's only eating one every 14 days i'm saving a pretty decent amount of money right there everybody because like i'm not going through the, the food you know some i'm not feeding snakes daily at all here especially ariel because she's a big girl and obviously feeding her daily is not healthy at all we want to make sure she maintains a stable like diet and also the, make sure she doesn't become obese which unfortunately that happens once in a while in the reptile community now if we're talking about baby snakes you know like a baby corn snake it's a good idea to feed one once every like four or five days per meal and if i order a shipment of pinky mice 100 pinky mice in a bag and i'm only feeding one to hit to a baby corn snake every five days i'm still saving a pretty good amount of money there you guys i'm probably saving up for almost a year right there almost a year so instead of like going to your pet store and you got like six mice in a small box and you're spending 12 bucks on them that's like going through them like once a month right there so if you that's why a lot of people kind of like to do online shopping a whole lot more than going to the store in person because it kind of actually does save a little bit of money and there's some once in a while there could be a discount on there too but yeah i kind of transitioned over from sh going to my local pet store from getting rodents to now doing online shopping for the food there since it's a lot easier and it's actually uh, helps me save a little bit of money over time too which is absolutely awesome so yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments down below anywho that's pretty much all I got to conclude of why I think corn snakes are one of the most popular pet snakes on the market and definitely a reason why, definitely those reasons why you should probably get one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you, do you think corn snakes are awesome pets? Do you think they're kind of overrated? You be the judge yourself. That, I got pretty much all the conclusion there, everybody. Now let's go ahead and check, see what the fam is up to today. Okay, so we're supposed to guess our own score predictions and who we think is gonna win today. For which win? For, uh, for both games. So I'm gonna start, okay? okay? I'm gonna say the Ravens beat the Chiefs by 10, 31 to 21. And then you go for your pick. Okay, I'm gonna say Chiefs got this one, 28 to 14. Okay, 28 to 14. And what do you think, Adam? Mm, 31 to 24. Baltimore or Ra Baltimore. Or Baltimore, all right. Okay, the Chiefs all right. Didn't say it wasn't the Chiefs fan. <laughs> All right, so that's one game, and then we'll, after this, we'll have to do Lions and uh, 49ers. Idiot. Well, unfortunately, uh, the first round, Kansas City and Baltimore. I was bummed out. Mom uh, was the lucky winner. <laughs> Show off. But now we are on to the big game here, Detroit Lions and the 49ers, everyone. For my score prediction, I'm gonna say Detroit wins in an upset by seven. 27, San Francisco 20. What's your guys' call? I was gonna say 27-21, Detroit. Okay, so for pretty much close to the same as mine. And for you? Well, geez, now I gotta do something different. Here, take a look at Boo for a minute. 28-21. Detroit? 
Yes. All right. So our score predictions, they're very close. Yeah. So I'm taking Detroit on this one, too. We're all rooting for Detroit, you guys. You better win this. Oh, what a loser. Fortunately, as for the other game, everybody, the 49ers came out on top with a three-point win, and... I don't know what happened to Detroit. They were literally in the lead at the half, 24-7, and just blew a 17-point lead throughout the third quarter, and just, I don't know what happened, but, anywho, the stage is set, everyone, for the Super Bowl. We got Kansas City taking on San Francisco. It is a Super Bowl rematch from Super Bowl 54, and uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll cast our votes here pretty soon. Feel free to smash that like button, everybody, because I'm going to go ahead and head to bed here because it's getting late. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.